to it. And John McClain, the Hall of Fame columnist, NFL Hall of Famer, joins us. And, John, I just saw this. I just saw this. I met him. I played basketball against him at Randolph Air Force Base. Robert Reed passing away. I just saw that note from the Rockets and the Fertitta family. He was a genuine, great human being. He was, played 10 of his 13 years for the Rockets. Uh, Bobby Joe Reed, I the uh, broadcaster they had, Gene Peterson, I always called it Bobby, Bobby Joe. And I, I never covered the Rockets or Reed. I watched them. And I've met him a few times it, just around town at events. And he was always such a good guy, so respectful. Everybody liked him. At uh, Houston Sports Awards three years ago, he was in the VIP area going around being so nice to people who wanted to shake hands he's only let's say only 68 years old that in this day and age that's too early i haven't heard anything about it being ill but i haven't seen anything yet that explain what happened john the off season is uh on on us now and free agency is coming up do you see the texans given that cj stroud was so good so quickly there Doubling down and making some big free agency moves on guys like Mike Evans or maybe like a Saquon Barkley, someone to come in and help help build that offense out and take it to the next level? Absolutely not. That's not been their MO in their rebuild, which has gone pretty well so far. They have they have refrained from giving big contracts that come back and bite them in the butt. And I think that's very wise. They got two really good receivers, Nico Collins and Tank Dell. Both of them were third-round picks. You can get receivers. This is a talented and deep draft. You do not need to draft a receiver unless you have a chance to get somebody like Marvin Harrison Jr. But you can take other positions and get the receivers in the second, third, and fourth round. Now, I think they will try to sign, re-sign Dalton Schultz because they have no other tight end. Uh, Raven Jordan, who had a, had a good playoff, but he's more – like an H back, he's not a tight end. And Dalton Schultz, people said he can't block because of the Cowboys. Well, down here, he blocked his butt off because they emphasize it. And if you don't block and you're a receiver and a tight end or a running back, you are not going to be on the field. So they need to re-sign him, and they do need to look for another receiver. John Mechie the third, who overcame cancer and a torn ACL. He played healthy this season, and he flashed ever once in a while. So next will be very telling for him. You know, he get, he gets a mulligan for whatever he went through, and they trade into the second round to get him. So they will draft another one. Maybe they'll sign some veteran like they did with Robert Woods, who I'm sure will be gone. They have, I think, the third most cap dollars. But uh, Nick Casario, in his rebuild, has not given – but one contract of more than two years, and that was to punter Cameron Johnston, who has done a great job, and that three-year contract is up. John, what does Jalen Petrie need uh, on the to-do list this offseason? The coaches love Jalen. He had an off year. He didn't make as many big plays as he did as a rookie. He was playing in D'Amico Ryan's defense. You know, they have not used him here like Baylor did where he's around the line of scrimmage, blitzing, covering slot receivers. He's He plays back, and he makes plays in open field. So they love his attitude, his ability, and every, they have every expectation of him bouncing back and becoming the kind of player they believe he can be. The problem is he needs help. Uh, because of injuries, their second, third, and fourth safeties this season were all signed off the street after the season began because of injuries. So safety is not a need people talk about around the country, but it is. And I don't, they're not good. They could get a safety in, in free agency because teams generally don't pay big bucks for their safeties. But having somebody to play next to Petrie and somebody to come in as the third safety, those are priority positions. John, obviously the quarterback position, the, the money is uh, going up, 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 up. It's always going to be that way. Is the percentage that teams will spend on a quarterback going up, or is it just the salary cap and so their contracts seem to be going up? The salary cap, which they estimate is going to go up 
twenty million a year. And then Mike Florio and Pro Football Talk came back with a, a source who said it's closely involved in figuring what the cap's going to be. It's, it's based on all the income that teams have. Is actually going to jump from like two twenty three to two fifty. So a twenty seven million jump is unheard of. They might try to space it out. The teams that got cap problems like the Saints are like eighty seven million over the cap. And they got some serious whittling to do. And that is a godsend to them to think that it will go up, usually it goes up 10 or 12. And so uh, some teams need it desperately. You can roll over cap dollars. And there's a lot of teams that do that, including the Texans. And, but those quarterbacks, and you're right, Dave, it's about the percentage. Does it go from 30% to 35%? No, usually it stays status quo because of, of the cap figure going up so much. And the reason is the streaming and gambling. John, uh, the Texans, uh, one of the things they need to do is fix their running game. How do you think they will go about that? I believe that is the biggest priority, Paul. They, uh, you know, they went 10-7 and seven at D. Cleveland in the playoffs, and then they, they had two running backs. Damian Pierce, who was a huge hit as a rookie. He couldn't adapt to the zone scheme. He was used to getting the ball and plowing straight ahead. And instead of having to be disciplined and read holes, and it's it's not easy. You can learn it. Devin Singletary had the best season of his career, but he's still not a main guy. So that's a priority. I don't see them spending money on a Saquon Barkley or something like that because in this zone scheme that goes back to – Bill Walsh and Mike Shanahan. Mike put out 1,000-yard rushers, taking in the fifth or sixth round almost every year. You can find them, but you got to find them. Then you got to coach them up. And the Texans coach they had last year, Chris Strasser had come from Indy. He had never coached his own team, so you got to figure he should be better. But that is, the, to me, the biggest priority this team has, running the ball to take some pressure off the Stroud. John, elsewhere, what kind of a market do you think there will be for a Justin Fields if the Bears do what people expect and draft Caleb Williams, for example, at number one? Yeah, Fields is going to be traded. It's just they're they're going to ask for a one. I don't think they'll get a one, but everybody thinks they'll get a two and, and another couple of picks maybe in 2025. And I would put content conditions on there because you can get a two that can be a one if he starts 15, 17 games and he takes you to the playoffs, you know, I wouldn't just do it straight up. Atlanta, everybody talks about Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's never had a quarterback like him ever. I don't see all of a sudden the Steelers changing their philosophy and going for a quarterback who likes to run as much as he does. And if I'm him, I want to go to Atlanta. After playing Chicago, I want to go indoors. I'm tired of all that wind. It flows in off the lake off of Lake Michigan, and uh, there will be a market for him. Minnesota Minnesota can't re-sign Kirk Cousins, then they should go for him. But whoever trades for him, Craig, one good season, they're going to have to pay a lot of money for him. And if he doesn't work out in one season, then all of a sudden he's going to be another one of those quarterbacks who were bust. I feel bad for him, but he's been poorly coached and hasn't had a lot of talent around him. John, I we we were in Vegas to cover the radio row. We weren't there for the weekend, but we enjoyed it. I thought they did a great job. Unfortunately, the weather was chilly and just not always comfortable. Um, hell of a game, but it made me think that uh, you know you get a stadium, you get a Super Bowl. Jerry Jones has this monstrous, once in a lifetime type place. He had a horrible weather. Mother Nature ruined that week in Arlington and Dallas, Fort Worth. Why would Dallas not have had something since? Because there's too many new stadiums that have been built? Yeah, but none of them has the capacity. You know, I always wonder, but no, none of them have the suites. Now, Atlanta, which had ice storms twice, got another one because they built a new stadium. You build a new stadium, they'll get one. When Tennessee builds its new stadium, there will be a Super Bowl in Tennessee. And the thing about the Cowboys, remember they had that scandal and the ticket selling scandal, uh-huh. and it was, it was embarrassed the Cowboys, it embarrassed the NFL. I don't understand why they haven't been back 
because weather's been bad in other places. You know, we went to New York and it was terrible, but uh, I can't believe with Jerry Jones' influence in the NFL, he can't get another Super Bowl there. Wasn't there also some uh, stands that they oh, tried they to construct terrible, that yeah. fell? They were they were yeah, bound they, and determined, which is what that's what they do. That's what Jerry does. Not that he hasn't had Super Bowls, but that the the numbers, the figures, the all of that means so much that they that they screwed that up too. They did, and that and and the scandal about ticket prices and all kind of things that did not go well for the league. But that was how many years ago was that? Oh, You'd think yeah. having that two thousand eleven, wasn't it? The yeah, January yeah. of eleven. Yeah. That having that great stadium there, they would have had another one. Now, what was inconvenient, of course, is one team's in Fort Worth, the other one's in Dallas, and the media bus is going back and forth and worried about ice and having wrecks and all that. I think they should have put both teams downtown in Dallas or Fort Worth, I don't care which, cut down on the travel time because every time you're in a bus, you're worried about getting stuck or having a wreck or somebody sliding into you. Yeah, they made it the North Texas Super Bowl, and it's like they didn't realize like how big that area is. Mm -hmm. Like, it's great that you have this gigantic area, but you know it sucks driving across it when it's not frozen. I mean, you know, let's not let's not pretend that it's something that it's not. And I think that was their big thing. John Matthew Slater retired after 16 seasons. Um, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, special teams player of all time, a 10-time Pro Bowler at that position. I, I'm, I doubt, you know, he's going to get much play for the Hall of Fame, but where does a guy like that stand when it comes to being as consistent and as good as he was and a part of so many championship teams as he was with the Patriots? Do you vote for a guy who's covered kicks, hasn't kicked, hasn't punted, uh, and that's what they do. Those great special teams players like he and Steve Tasker, they don't return kicks or punts. They're just great on coverage, and they do well on blocking. So it's hard for me to vote for guys like that over position players. Adam Vinatieri is coming up next year. I'll vote for him when Justin Tucker is eligible. I would vote for Justin Tucker as well. But it's going to be hard for a coverage guy. We just finally got a. We just finally got uh, uh, Devin Esther in this year, and Devin Esther is the greatest return guy in history. And because he affected games, and it took him forever. And uh, so I think that Slater, while certainly worthy with his 10 Pro Bowls, you asked where he stood, Paul, he's going to stand right behind Steve Tasker. John, I am a Commanders fan, as three-quarters of this room actually uh, in here right now are. And so we're we're used to being let down and, and all those types of things. So you can just be truthful with us and, and whatever good or bad we're, we'll deal with it but what do you think about the Dan Quinn hires of Cliff Kingsbury as OC and Joe Witt Jr. as defensive coordinator Craig have you ever held that against your dad at times perhaps the, John the, the perhaps last, the last like why couldn't years, I have been yes. a, a Chiefs fan or something right like a Patriots fan yeah no <laughs> It's, uh, Were it's you a, even born when they won their last Super Bowl? I was 91? alive. I was, was alive for ninety two. Yeah, he was eighty. He was 80, 81, eight, I guess, eight years yeah. old. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think Dan Quinn was a safe hire. I think they there was others they wanted, like McDonald. It was safe. I like I like Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury. If you look at the offense that they had in Arizona with Kyler Murray, and he liked Murray more than anybody else. If he hadn't been hired by the Cardinals. Murray wouldn't have been the first overall pick. But he had good offenses he, with injuries, so I think it's a good move. They're going to get a quarterback. I don't think they'll get Caleb Williams, but they're going to have a choice of Jalen Daniels and Drake May. And uh, I think Kingsbury will do a really good job with the offense, and Dan Quinn will do a good job with the defense. So have you been to a Houston Cougars basketball game this season? No, it's uh, it's too crowded, and uh, – it's, they did a great job when they built that arena, just like Foster Pavilion, smaller, yep. loud, sold out, demand for tickets. And uh, I'm glad they're playing in Waco next week instead of, is it Saturday? Yeah. Saturday. I'm yeah. glad they're playing in Waco instead of Waco. The Bears coming down, leaving Waco, coming down here. I just want to make sure Baylor beats BYU and goes into that game with a victory. And, uh, it also doesn't have a letdown against TCU and they have to go to Fort Worth after it. There's a lot of people from 
telling me about, well, Cougars are going up to play Waco I. And I said, well, I told them Waco I swept Iowa State. And they were impressed till they realized they played one game. And I said, yeah, they swept them. Yeah. They swept them 1 0. Yep. So there's a lot of trash talking down here already about the Cougars and Bears, but sick them Bears when they're uh, playing in Provo tonight. Well, the Chiefs beat the uh, 49ers 1 0. They swept yeah, them, right, to win the Super Bowl. So that's, <laughs> that's all that matters. John, uh, as always, love the memories, the, the storytelling. Appreciate what you do and what you represent. Thanks for your time. Guys, thank you very much. It's sick and bear. Yes, sir. John McClain, Hall of Fame columnist with us on Tuesdays uh, in the uh, 